All right, so uh, again, it kind of depends on what illness you have as to whether the period of convalescence is going to be contagious or not. Um, so again, unbeknownst to you, you could be spreading it uh, to other people when you didn't mean to. So let's look at this question here. This is the incubation period for a cold is three days and the period of disease is usually five days. The person next to you has a cold. When would you know whether you contracted it? So we've got to figure out how long it's going to take before it shows up in you. Um, so that would be the incubation period, which is three days. So you would know three days later that you contracted the cold from them versus somebody else. Um, so that would be the answer for that question. So the spread of infection, now that you have an understanding of normal flora in the body and how that helps us and what the etiology of infectious diseases are, so how they're caused, types of infectious diseases, uh, we're going to examine the sources of pathogens and how they're transmitted. So now we're actually going to talk about the reservoirs. So for a disease to perpetuate itself, there has to be a continual course of disease organisms. That just means that you have to have a source of disease. And that source is called a reservoir of infection. Um, there's different kinds. You can have human, animal, and non-living reservoirs. So let's look at these individually. So human is the principal living reservoir for human diseases. Um, a lot of people harbor different pathogens and they're transmitted. Um, they transmit them directly and indirectly to other people. And then people with signs and symptoms of the disease may transmit the disease again. So those are called carriers. So they harbor pathogens and then transmit them to somebody else. Um, without showing any signs of illness. So this is somebody that um, maybe is transferring the flu virus to everybody, but um, they didn't know they had it on them, and so they're getting everybody else sick, but they themselves are not sick. Those would be the carriers. So some carriers have inapparent infections, which inapparent infections were the ones where they didn't know that they had it. So there's no signs and symptoms exhibited. And then other people, um, especially with like a latent disease, which means they had it and now it's not doing anything, but it could pop up at any point again, um, can carry the disease during the symptom-free stages and get people sick. Um, or again, you can get somebody sick during the incubation and uh, convalescent period as well. AIDS is a huge one of those. With the AIDS infection, um, when you first contract it, you're down for like a week to two weeks, like you have the flu. And then um, at that point, you are contagious to anybody else. And right after that point, you're extremely contagious. But you get over those symptoms. And you can have the HIV infection for years and years and years before you actually develop full-blown AIDS. And um, you can be giving that disease to all kinds of people and not even know it because you didn't even know you had it yourself, um, which is why AIDS is such a... Uh, difficult disease to get control of because a lot of people don't even know they have it. Uh, diphtheria, typhoid fever, hepatitis, and gonorrhea are also the same way as far as um, sometimes you don't know you have it. So they talk about typhoid Mary. She didn't know she had it. She was a carrier. She gave, kept giving typhoid fever to all kinds of people, and um, but she was not sick herself. So with animal reservoirs, they can be wild or domesticated animals. Um, so 
so like rabies and Lyme disease, rabies you can get from different kinds of animals. You get it from dogs, cats, raccoons, armadillos, whatever, squirrels. Um, Lyme disease, you're going to get those from ticks and things. Um, so there's about 150 uh, different kinds of diseases that are caused or carried by animals, and those are called uh, zoonoses. Um, so they're going to occur in uh, animals, and then they can turn around and give them to us as humans. Um, so they can be transmitted by two, a couple of different routes. The direct contact with the animal, so you, you know, they bite you on the hand, that would be direct contact. Um, or direct contact with the waste of the animal, such as like cleaning out the kitty litter and getting that on you. Um, contaminated food or water, contaminated air, um, hides, furs, feathers, uh, or just consuming an animal that has been infected as well. And then we'll talk about vectors in a second, which we talked about in our last chapter again. Um, Non-living reservoirs uh, are things such as the soil and water, um, which are the two major ones, but you can also have things such as food um, that's going to be a non-living reservoir. So soil has a bunch of fungus in it, which is going to cause mycoses, um, such as ringworm, or some other sort of systemic infection. And water, obviously, you drink it, you're going to have a lot of gastrointestinal diseases through that. Mainly it's contaminated with, um, could be feces or just microorganisms that have gotten in the water that you have now ingested. So that would be an example of a non-living reservoir. So how do we actually transmit these diseases? Um, so we have contact transmission, so that can be direct or indirect or droplet, but it's by that particular microorganism touching you in some way. So direct contact would be person to person, so I uh, touch your hand, I get microorganisms on you, you touch your face, you get microorganisms within you. Um, so that would be direct contact. Um, most of direct contact is going to include touching, kissing, uh, sexual intercourse, anything like that. Um, among the diseases that can be transmitted in this manner, a lot of respiratory tract diseases such as the common cold and flu, uh, hepatitis A, measles, scarlet fever, any sort of sexually transmitted infections are going to be transmitted this way. AIDS can be spread this way. Um, so as a healthcare worker, the way you protect yourself from this is wearing things such as gloves and masks to guard yourself from getting sick from caring for your patient. Um, indirect contact is when uh, a disease is transmitted from its reservoir to the host from a non-living object. So say I was sick with the flu and I touched the light switch and then you come behind me and touch the light switch. You can get the flu from that. So that would be indirect contact. Um, so things like tissues, handkerchiefs, towels, bedding, diapers, drinking cups, utensils, toys, money, uh, anything like that is going to can be a source of indirect contact of a disease. And then we have droplet transmission. So we're going to talk about droplet and airborne transmission. And they are two different things. Droplet is it travels a short distance, it lands, and it's done. So this would be like if I sneezed or I coughed, spit comes out of my mouth, flies through the air, and then hits the ground and it doesn't move anymore. That's droplet. And then we'll talk about the difference between that and airborne in a second. So droplets are going to come out through coughing, sneezing, laughing, talking. Um, anybody that spits while they talk, obviously you have, you know, when they're sick, everybody else is going to get sick too. Uh, 
So one sneeze can produce up to 20,000 different droplets. So if they have some nice 